Hello, aloha, I hope you are well. I'm your Minna Van Dyken, MD from Out of the Doldrums. Today, we're gonna to talk about COVID-19, also known as coronavirus. In case you haven't heard, there's a little bit of an outbreak. More importantly, let's talk strategy, how not to contract and spread the novel coronavirus. In the last video, which I link below, we talked about the practical things we can do to decrease or limit infection and spread of the coronavirus. In this video, we'll talk about ways you can boost your immune system so that you are more resistant to exposure if that were to occur. The COVID-19 virus is new. Therefore, we don't have much research as far as what prevents that exact strain of the coronavirus. We do know the influenza virus, which is its close relative. And so strengthening your immune system against the influenza virus will also likely work against this strain of novel coronavirus. There's no doubt that it will be beneficial if we can get your immune system as strong as it possibly can be during this flu season. So here's the thing. The human immune system is a very complex entity. It's full of intricate stages and pathways. Every stage of the immune response depends on the presence of certain micronutrients. We're still investigating many nutrients and their effects on the immune system, but we do know of a few that are very well researched and we'll talk about them shortly. All of these micronutrients happen to come from plant foods, so it makes sense during flu season, it is much healthier to make sure your diet is packed full of fruits and vegetables. The worst thing you could possibly do is eat foods that have a low nutritional value. So foods like processed foods, fast foods, refined carbohydrates, and refined sugars. So let's discuss overall strategies to strengthen your immune system. Strategy number one make sure you're getting enough sleep. Sleep is crucial to immune system function. One study done at UCSF found that a shorter sleep duration was associated with increased susceptibility to the common cold. In this study, they found that individuals sleeping less than six hours per night were at an elevated risk of contracting the common cold, whereas those who slept more than six hours were not. So in summary, make sure you're well rested. The amount of sleep required is different for each and every individual. So find out how much sleep you need and make sure you're getting enough. Bare, bare minimum sleep time should be six hours. I would recommend more. In general, try to sleep at least seven hours every night, if not more, and try taking a 20 minute power nap if you notice you're short on your sleep. Strategy number two, engage in moderate exercise. Keyword is moderate. The exercise should not be too intense and it should not be too mild. Research shows that people who exercise in moderation report fewer colds. Regular, consistent exercise leads to substantial benefits in the immune system health over the long term. Studies have shown that during moderate exercise, immune cells circulate through the body much more quickly and they're better able to kill bacteria and viruses. You have to be careful though, because there's also evidence that too much intense exercise can negatively impact your immune system. One study showed that over 90 minutes of high intensity exercise made athletes more susceptible to illness for up to 72 hours after the exercise session. So in summary, exercise can be an immune booster. It's important though to get the right amount of exercise. Also, it's crucial not to sacrifice sleep in order to get that exercise. Strategy number three, supplement with vitamin D. This is the micronutrient that we have the most solid research on when it comes to the prevention of viral illness. We know that people who have higher vitamin D levels have a lower risk of upper respiratory tract infection or cold. So the first recommendation would be to get your vitamin D levels checked. That way you know whether you're high or if you're low. If you are normal or high, there's nothing really to worry about. But if you're low, you might wanna consider supplementing. There are a plethora of studies demonstrating that supplementation with vitamin D, anywhere from 400 up to 2000 international units or IU per day, will prevent influenza and other respiratory tract infections. From my perspective during this flu season, it's reasonable and safe to supplement with 1000 IU per day in order to optimize immunity and prevent infection. Strategy number four, supplement with vitamin C. A large Cochrane review looked at 29 trials with over 11,000 research participants. They found that supplementing with vitamin D can help decrease the duration and the severity of the common cold. 
In adults, the duration of colds was reduced by 8%, and in children, it was reduced by 18%. One group of people that would benefit from vitamin C supplementation is athletes or people who engage in heavy physical activity. We find that oftentimes their vitamin C levels may be depleted. One study demonstrated that 0.6 to 1 grams of vitamin C per day in this group of people slashed the risk of getting sick in half. So in summary, vitamin C is safe and it's very cost effective. During the flu season, it would be very reasonable to supplement with 1 to 2 grams of vitamin C daily. Are we staying out here? Yeah. Ah! Strategy 5. Supplement with zinc. Many studies have agreed that supplementation of zinc is helpful in reducing the risk of pneumonia and the common cold, specifically in the elderly and children. I am getting soaked. <laughs> zinc also has been shown to shorten the duration of cold by approximately 33%. It's important that the zinc is taken before the onset of the symptoms or within 24 hours of the onset of symptoms. It's also worth noting that there are adverse effects with zinc supplementation, namely bad taste. So how much zinc should we be supplementing with? Well, 20 milligrams per day is what most of the studies are based on. Strategy number six, supplement with echinacea. A randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial found that echinacea reduced the total number and duration of cold episodes. Another meta-analysis demonstrated that echinacea lowers the risk of recurrences and decreases the development of upper respiratory tract infection complications. It mainly does this through antiviral and anti-inflammatory effects, as well as by modulating the immune system in general. What dose of echinacea should we be taking? Well, it differs whether it's for prevention or if you already are infected. For prevention, it's recommended to take 2,400 milligrams per day. If you are unfortunate enough to get an upper respiratory tract infection, it's recommended to increase this dose to 4,000 milligrams per day. This supplement in particular, I would start as soon as possible. Most studies show the longer you supplement before being exposed to the virus, the better you can fight it. The ideal time frame would be supplementing with echinacea four months prior to viral exposure. Strategy seven, add some garlic to your regimen. Garlic is known to have antiviral properties. It's also been shown to improve your immune system function. One randomized controlled trial demonstrated that garlic supplementation with 180 milligrams of allicin, which is the active ingredient in garlic, that taken daily for 12 weeks decreased occurrences of the common cold and also decreased symptom intensity and duration. Yes, taking garlic may have some other things you may have to deal with like bad breath and bad body odor and a possible rash, but if it prevents a coronavirus infection, it just might be worth it. Strategy number eight probiotics. A recent meta-analysis revealed that probiotic supplementation resulted in significantly fewer numbers of days of illness compared to those who took a placebo. Because of the multiple studies included here, one particular probiotic could not be singled out. But we do know the probiotics all belong to the lactobacillus and the bifidobacterium genera. So if you're looking for a probiotic in this capacity, best to look for one that contains lactobacillus and bifidobacteria. Even better, work to add probiotic foods to your diet regimen like sauerkraut, kimchi, miso, natto. Yum. Strategy number nine. Nine. Minimize stress in your life. I know it sounds a little woo-woo, but there's actually some science behind it. There's some studies showing that chronic stress decreases your immune system function. There's actually one study that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine that found that psychological stress was associated with a dose-dependent increase in susceptibility to upper respiratory tract infections. So find a healthy coping strategy that helps you deal with the stress in your life and stick to it. For some, the coping strategy could be mindfulness or meditation. For others, it could be exercise or sitting down to watch a good movie. Just make sure you stick to healthy coping mechanisms and avoid unhealthy things like drugs or excess alcohol as a coping mechanism. Finally, strategy number 10, increase flavonoids in your life. What are flavonoids, you might ask? Well, they're the most common group of what we call polyphenols available in the human diet. And they're found exclusively and you guessed it, plants. 
So, in a nutshell, flavonoids are those good chemicals that we get from the plants that we eat. A recent meta-analysis revealed that flavonoid supplementation decreased upper respiratory tract infection incidence by one-third or 33% compared to the control. It was also found to decrease the sick day count by 40%. That's huge! So what are some ways we can increase flavonoids in our diet? Well, first off, and obviously, let's make sure to pack our diet with tons of colorful fruits and vegetables. Additionally, good sources of flavonoids are green tea, quercetin, blueberries, and dark chocolate. Most of the studies we looked at looked at anywhere from 1,000 to 5,000 milligrams of flavonoids daily for upper respiratory tract infection prevention. Just to give you an idea, 1,000 milligrams can be obtained by eating 100 grams of blueberries, 100 grams of dark chocolate, or a 250 ml glass of Shiraz red wine, or 250 ml of green tea. So there you have it. I hope you learned some new tips to help you become less susceptible to contracting the novel coronavirus. These tips will also help improve your immune system in general and hopefully prevent transmission of the common cold as well. Please let me know in the comments below what you think of this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to show us some real support, subscribe. We love hearing from you, so please let us know in the comments below what topics you want to hear more about in future videos. Until then, stay healthy. Stay well and aloha.